Good morning and welcome to The Vine, the online campus here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. My name's Doug Lane, I'm senior pastor here. And it's a special day in the life of the church for it is All Saints Sunday. On All Saints Sunday, we remember the lives of those who have died in the past year and are now no longer with us. And so we give honor to um, the lives that they lived and recognize the life that they continue to live with Jesus. And so I suspect that there may be somebody in your life that you have lost. Maybe it was this year, maybe it was previous to this one. I pray that God will be with you and give you strength for today and tomorrow. And I pray that you will join those around the world who are grieving the loss of loved ones today. Stay with us as uh, we continue to remember the saints of the church. Please pray with me. Almighty God, you have knit us together in one communion and one fellowship. In the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord, grant us grace. So to follow your holy saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for those who sincerely love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my great joy and privilege to get to lead us today in prayer. Will you join me now as we go before God in prayer? Holy and loving God, we thank you for gathering us together today. God, we thank you that your spirit is big enough and expansive enough to unite us together in your name, even when we are apart physically. We thank you, God, today for the saints that have gone before us. Thank you that we are not the first people to try and follow you, Jesus, but that we stand in a long line of Christians. Thank you for their witness, for the ways that they have shown us what the life of faith can look like. We thank you, God, that as the hymn we often sing reminds us, these saints now rest from their labors. We thank you also for the promise that we will be reunited together with them through Jesus Christ at the resurrection of the dead. God, as we await that day, we feel the tension between the world as it is and the world as it will be in your new future. So we pray now for these places of brokenness in our world. We pray for the war-torn parts of our world, especially for Gaza and Ukraine. We pray for our own community, especially as we prepare for an election. God, help us to know how to love each other well, even when we disagree on big and important things. God, we pray for all of those who are sick or who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. And God, we pray especially for all those who we name before you now, either out loud or in our hearts. God, we thank you that you not only hear our prayers, but that you listen to them and that you have proved yourself time and time again to be faithful. And so God, trusting in your goodness, help us to mean what we say as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we transition now to a time of reflection and generosity, 
I'd like to remind you that you can always give to support the ministries of Wrightsville United Methodist Church, including this service of The Vine, on our website, wrightsvilleumc.org, or through the mail. Let's now continue to worship God. kids. I'm Pastor Julia. I have a question. Do you have a role model? A role model is someone that you look up to, someone that you want to be like. I know when I was little, one of my role models was my big sister, Maddie, or my dance teacher, and some people that I knew also at church that I wanted to be like. Well, here in the church, we have kind of a special word for people that we think of as role models, and they're called saints. Today is a special day at church called All Saints Sunday, when we celebrate people who have been role models for us. You know, each one of these candles that's here on the altar represents a saint that we're celebrating today. These are people that were a part of our church and who passed away this year. And so we're taking a time to honor them and remember how much they meant to all of us. Now, I, unfortunately, I don't have time to tell you about every single person that these candles represent, but I wanted to tell you about a couple of them today. These are a few of our saints. The first is a man named Bill McLean. Mr. McLean was an incredible leader here at Wrightsville. He taught Sunday school, especially the Agape Sunday School class. And he was always so kind and welcoming to me. I know that if you met Mr. McLean, you know just how kind and wonderful he was. This is another saint. Her name is Fran Russ. And Ms. Russ was actually the first mayor here in Wrightsville Beach. And if you have ever walked around the loop, or if you've played soccer in the park that is across the street from our church, you got to do that because of Miss Russ, because she worked really hard to make sure that all of us would have that really great green space to play in and to enjoy. So she's a saint in our church. I also want to tell you about Mr. Leon West. Mr. West was a member of Oleander United Methodist Church up until about two years ago. And then when Oleander joined together with us here at Wrightsville, he became a member of Wrightsville. If you haven't been yet to Wrightsville on Oleander, which is our new campus, one day you will be there. You'll get to be there for all of our programming for youth. And we have that incredible space because, in part, Mr. Leon West said that he wanted to help us create a space for all of our youth and our kids. You know, all of these candles represent someone who has an amazing story and that made a big impact both on their families and their friends and on all of us here at the church. I hope that today you can enjoy as we celebrate the lives of all of these amazing people who've taught us more about what it means to be a Christian. Let's say a prayer now together. Dear God, thank you for making me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saints who show us how to be like you. We love you and it's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Bye. On this all important All Saints Sunday, we look to Jesus' own death. And so our story picks up in the gospel according to Luke chapter 23, beginning with verse 32. Luke writes that two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that's called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right 
and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he's the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you're under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we're getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man's done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of God. For us, the people of God, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we give you thanks for this day and for all those that we love but see no more. And we ask that you will bless us. And Lord, I pray that you will bless the, the preaching and the hearing of today's sermon. And where I say something that may not be from you, I pray that that will be quickly forgotten. But anything that I say that does come from you, I pray that it will take root. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, today's scripture may seem like a strange story to pick for All Saints Sunday, but I love this story, actually. I love what it tells us about Jesus and our salvation. I want us to think about the thieves on the cross for a moment, especially the one who asked Jesus to remember him. I can't wait to find that guy when I get to heaven so I can ask him, how did all that shake out for you? Because you never once went to church, never joined a Bible study, never got baptized. And yet, yet, you made it. How in the world did you get in? That's what the angel must have asked when the thief showed up in heaven. You know, like, what are you doing here? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Well, like, I, don't, I don't know. Well, you must have, well, I, just wait here. I, I, I need to get my supervisor. So he goes and he gets his supervisor and he brings him back and he says, Sir, we, we've got a few questions for you. First of all, are you clear on the doctrine of justification by faith? The guy says, never heard of it. And what about your understanding of scripture? The thief just stares blankly at the supervisor and eventually in frustration, the supervisor says, on what basis are you here? The man said, well, the man in the middle said I could. That's the right answer. This story reminds us so well that salvation is a free gift from God. The repentant thief had no time for good deeds. He could not repay those that he'd stolen from or help the poor or even be baptized. He didn't have a sophisticated faith. He probably wouldn't have done so well on a test on his Bible knowledge. All he could do was look to the Savior with faith and ask for mercy. And you know what? That's all he needed. The experience of the repentant thief is a perfect illustration of the biblical truth that salvation is a gift of God's grace that we receive through faith. What else is cool about this story of the repentant thief is that it shows us that no sin is too bad to be forgiven. The repentant thief had already received the death sentence for his wrongdoing. All we know about his sin is that the scriptures call him a thief and a criminal. This sin, according to the world, deserved death. However, according to Jesus, it was forgivable. The death of Jesus is enough to pay the debt for all our sins. What the sinner has to do is acknowledge and confess his or her sinfulness and ask Jesus for forgiveness. So ultimately, this story means there is hope for all of us. And that I don't have to worry for a second where our church members are that have passed in the last year. For if that guy got in, well, our loved ones and church members most certainly did. The repentant thief believed in Jesus in his very last minutes. This is proof 
that God will forgive the sins of all those who believe in him, even in their dying breath. But the choice is ours. Now there was the first thief who hurled insults at Jesus, who wanted to be saved from a situation, but he didn't really want to be saved from his sin. Let me say that again. The first thief wanted to be saved from his situation, but he didn't want to be saved from his sin. His cry was simply, get me down off this cross. Be the Christ of convenience, the, message, the Messiah of magic tricks. This was the desire of his heart. He didn't want to be redeemed, he just wanted to be rescued. And that's us, isn't it? If you're the son of God, throw yourself down from the temple. If you're the son of God, save my marriage. Heal my child. Take away my pain. Just get me down off this cross, please. Then I'll believe in you. Then I'll call you Lord. But then there was a second thief. And he looked at Jesus' sacrifice and he recognized the character, and the mercy, and the plan of God. And he looked at Jesus, all beaten and bloody and insulted and spat upon. And he saw a God who loved the world so much that he came to walk in our shoes and share in our sorrows and die the most painful and humiliating death imaginable so that we could live forever with God. The second thief, this repentant one, he looked at Jesus in his last awful moments and he saw his king hanging on a cross. He saw the very purpose for Jesus' sacrifice. He saw God's plan for salvation and all he could do was ask for mercy. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Whether or not you save me from my situation, Save me from my sin. Save me from myself. That's humility. That's a profession of faith. I recently came across a true story of a mother whose daughter ran away and fell into a life of sin. For a long time, no one even knew where the young girl was. But eventually, that daughter returned home and repented of her sin and gave her life to Jesus. And some people asked the mother what she'd done to bring her daughter back home. And she said, well, I prayed for her night and day. But that wasn't all. She also said, I never went to bed at night without leaving my front door unlocked. I thought that if my daughter ever did come back one night when I was in bed, she'd never be able to say that she found the door locked. She should never be able to say that she came to her mother's home and couldn't get in. And so it happened. One night, the daughter came back. She tried the door, and she found it open. And this unlocked door was such a symbol of God's grace to the young woman that she decided that night to turn her life around. The author of the story wrote that that unlocked door is a beautiful illustration of God's grace towards sinners. God's door is always unlocked whenever you're willing to come home. Well, the cross of Jesus Christ is the key that unlocks the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a chosen kingdom. It's not an imposed one. God's not going to force it on you. You have to see it. You have to believe it. You have to want it, like the thief on the cross, knowing that we don't deserve it, but throwing ourselves on God's mercy anyway, because that kind of love can't be earned. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That's our prayer. If we receive Jesus as our king, our identity is rooted in the love of God. The will of God becomes our agenda. The work of God becomes our calling. Eternal life with God becomes our inheritance. Jesus didn't come just to save us from our circumstances. He came to share in our circumstances and use those circumstances to grow us into God's image. And as we learn to submit our lives to Jesus' reign, no matter what our circumstances are, others will see the truth and the glory of God in our lives. That's what I see in the lives of the saints that we celebrate today. They live lives far better than the thief on the cross, and they didn't wait to the very last minute to confess their faith in Jesus either. They made the decision to follow Jesus so much earlier in their lives, and it showed and because they chose Jesus, others came to choose Jesus because of them. Because they received grace, 
they extended grace to others. Because they received forgiveness, they forgave others. And because they received the love of God, they shared their love with those around them. Our decisions matter. Two thieves hung on either side of Jesus. One asked Jesus to change his circumstances. The other asked Jesus to change their life. What will you decide? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to bow your head as I pray a prayer for all the saints who have gone in the last year or all those that you might remember in your life today. Let us pray. Everlasting God, this day revives in us memories of loved ones who are no more. What happiness we shared when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved we lived our lives together. Their memory is a blessing forever. Now months or even years may have passed and still we feel near to them. Our hearts yearn for them. Though the bitter grief may have softened, a duller pain abides. For the place where once they stood is empty now. The links of life are broken. But the links of love and longing cannot be broken. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We see them now with the eye of memory. Their faults forgiven, their virtues grown only larger. So does goodness live and weakness fade from sight. We remember them with gratitude and bless their names for their memory is a blessing forever. And we remember as well the members who but yesterday were part of our congregation and community. To all who cared for us and labored for all people, we pay them tribute. May we prove worthy of carrying on the tradition of our faith, for now the task has been given to us. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We give thanks that these now live and reign with you as a great crowd of witnesses, they surround us with their blessings and offer you hymns of praise and thanksgiving, for they are alive forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Silent friend, your life has found this ending. To dust returns your weary mortal frame. God, who before your birth called you to be, 
Now calls you his, his accent still the same. Go silent friend, your life in Christ is buried. For you he lived and died and rose again. Close by his side, your promised peace is waiting. Where fully grown, you shall with God remain. No silent friend, forgive us if we grieve you. Safe now in heaven, kindly say our name. Your life has touched us, that is why we mourn you. Our lives without you cannot be the same. Go silent friend, we do not grudge your glory. Sing, sing of joy, deep praises to your Lord. You who believe that Christ would come back for you, now celebrate that Jesus keeps his word. Those that have made a decision to follow Jesus did so not just to have Jesus change their circumstances, but rather to have Jesus change their lives. And now those who have passed, those who we celebrate today, are with Jesus continuing to live forever. This is our hope too. It's the hope for everyone who has faith in Jesus. And so I promise that if you have that faith and you share in that faith, that one day you will see your loved one again. So go forth in faith. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are standing in the footsteps of those that went before. And we will be reunited when we reach at our shore Oh, when the saints Go marching in Oh, when the saints Go marching in Lord, I want to be In that number When the saints Go marching in And when the bells Begin to ring Oh, when the bells begin to ring, Lord, I want to be in that number when the bells begin to ring. And when the stars begin to shine, oh, when the stars begin to shine, Lord, I want to be in that number when the stars begin to shine Oh, when the band begins to play Oh, when the band begins to play Lord, I want to be in that number When the band begins to play Oh, when the saints go marching in Oh, when the saints go marching in, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go 